Welcome. My name is Jason Helgerson. I'm the New York State Medicaid Director, and I'm here to present the latest in our series of New York State whiteboard presentations. Today's important topic, community-based organizations and value-based payment. Really important topic, a lot of interest out there amongst community-based organizations to become part of our effort to improve the health of the population in New York State through the move to value-based payment and a lot of unique opportunities, things that are unique to New York, not being tried anywhere else in the country, to really actually integrate the CBOs in a very formalized way into our value-based payment efforts. So we'll start at the top. Understand if your organization is a Tier 1, Tier 2, or Tier 3 CBO. Lots of organizations see themselves as CBOs, but when we uh, launched this initiative, we wanted to sort of differentiate between those that were providers of Medicaid services, that's who you'll see at the top higher tier, uh, from those who really have mostly been local government funded or, um, or run on th uh, philanthropy and haven't been billing uh, Medicaid services. That's where you find your tier one CBOs. Important to know this because within the roadmap for value-based payment, there's an explicit requirement that the more advanced value-based payment contractors must uh, contract with a tier one CBO, use that tier one CBO, hopefully to address social determinants of health. It's a way for us to really begin to formalize the relationship for what we think are some very culturally competent, linguistically competent organizations that can really help us address those social determinants of health issues. So it's really important for you to know what type of CBO are you. Next up is know your value proposition. Understand the services you provide, know the impact, be able to take that information to either a provider or a health plan to really make the case as to why you could be a key part of their success in lowering costs and improving outcomes. But it's really important for you to develop that value proposition, which then relates to the next question. So what should we as, or what should community-based organizations be doing uh, in terms of how they should build off of what they've done and hopefully the successes of the past? We think the best place to start is within your existing business model. The services that you provided, look to expand them or to adapt them or modify them um, so that they can actually help the contractor, help the plan achieve their goals in terms of improved health outcomes. Um, we don't think it makes sense for you to try a whole new business line, something you've never done before. Maybe in the future when there's new opportunities, you have some success and existing relationships become stronger, um, then there'll be an opportunity to sort of challenge the business model, but we think it makes sense to start with what, what you have historically done best. Next, apply for innovation funds. There's a unique opportunity that many PPSs are now offering, which is funds that go out to organizations, including CBOs, either on their own or in partnership with others, to really work to improve, um, help the PPSs be successful. Great opportunity if you haven't yet developed that value proposition to really begin to test some of the concepts, some of the programs that you've been operating, see how they work in ways that are consistent with the PPS goals, which are also the same goals that we have in value-based payments. So great funding opportunity there. And then lastly, network. We really think that it's important for community-based organizations to build relationships with healthcare providers in their community. A great place to start is within the PPS itself. If you're attending a, uh, a PAC meeting or you're going out and you're um, uh, participating in one of the projects that the PPS is running, but it's being done in concert with providers, it's really a great opportunity to build relationships with those organizations because we think those are the relationships you can leverage that will turn into contracts at some point where you can really assist them in being successful in value-based payment. So that's it. Five points, opportunities are out there for CBOs. We're very excited. We think it's a key, unique component of value-based payment in New York State. Uh, and we look forward to future whiteboards on this topic and on other topics in the future. Thank you very much.